The images the Air 2S captures is nothing short of amazing, but under certain lighting conditions, the simple addition of an ND filter can turn amazing into fantastic. Actually, I'm not sure which is better, amazing or fantastic, but you know what I mean. The Air 2S has a fixed aperture of f2.8, so in order to raise your f-stop or reduce the amount of light passing through the lens, you have to use an ND filter. I shot a bunch of footage using different ND filters under different lighting conditions and formats and put it all together to give you an idea of how they perform and when you might want to use one. So let's take a look at what ND filters are, how they work, and some side-by-side -side footage using ND filters. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's Joe from Ghost1917. Before I get into what ND filters are and how they work, I want to tell you about the lens cover I use when not using an ND filter. It's a UV lens which is completely clear and simply blocks UV rays from entering the camera lens. But the primary reason I use it is because the Air 2S comes with an empty frame with no protective glass and after some time you're bound to get a scratch on the unprotected lens as I did. So this clear lens serves to protect the camera lens without affecting the image quality or introducing any unwanted color or artifacts. Now with that out of the way, here's a quick explanation of what ND filters are and how they work. The ND stands for neutral density, meaning the filter affects only the light levels entering the camera lens. It doesn't have any impact on image, color, contrast, or sharpness. It simply reduces the amount of light reaching the Air 2S's large 1-inch sensor. It basically acts like a pair of sunglasses for your drone's camera. This set happens to be the one which comes packaged with the Air 2S. It has an ND4, an ND8, an ND16, and an ND32. Now, a quick caveat. The footage on the right was shot using the ND filters that come with the Air 2S, and if you look at the footage, you can see the ND32 adds a reddish tint to the image. The same footage on the left was shot using a PGY Tech VND variable filter set to five stops or ND32. You can see it lowers the exposure without adding any tint to the image. It's noticeable in the color of the sky, but even more prominent when you look at the soil and driveways. Notice the reddish tint. The natural colors were more yellowish, as captured by the PGY Tech filter. Also, I feel without overexposing them. So, I guess the point I'm trying to make is, not all ND filters are created equal. I also like the ease of not having to constantly change out the filter, as the variable ND switches from 2 to 5 stops, or ND4 to ND32. And I have another VND filter that goes from 6 to 9 stops, or ND64 to ND512. I only just started using these PGY Tech filters, but I'm very impressed with the quality of both the filter construction and the image it produces. ND filters are primarily designated in one of two ways, ND numbers and stops. ND numbers refer to the amount by which the light is diminished. For example, an ND16 reduces the light by 1 16th. ND filters designated with stops refer to the halving of light. For example, one stop equals ND2, two stops equals ND4, three stops equal ND8, and four stops equal ND16. It can get a little confusing, so the important thing to remember is the higher the number, regardless of the type of designation, the darker it is. This footage was shot in 4K30 HLG Auto with no filter. An ND4, an ND8, an ND16, and an ND32. The camera compensates for the high exposure by speeding up the shutter speed. The footage shot with no filter had shutter speeds ranging from 1 3200ths to 1 5000th of a second. The ND4 required shutter speeds of 1 800th to 1 1000th. The ND8, 1 400th to 1 725th. The ND16, 1 250th to 1 400th. And the ND32, 1 1 20th to 1 1 60th. So even the ND32 was unable to lower the shutter speed to within the 180 rule or double the frame rate, which would be 1 60th of a second. So what does this all mean? 
Well, generally speaking, the closer your shutter speed is to twice your frame rate, the smoother the footage will appear and objects you capture that are in motion will generate motion blur. But you also need to balance out the exposure value. In other words, which is more important in the shot you're trying to get, super buttery smoothness or better exposure? You kind of have to decide for yourself, and every situation is different. If you're shooting a scene with a waterfall in it, you want to get as close to the 180 rule as possible to capture the motion blur of the water. But landscape shots where there is little to no motion, but a whole lot of light, you'll probably want to up that frame rate and limit the amount of light coming in. Another type of ND filter is a polarized filter, which is used to cut down sun glare, particularly when shooting the surface of water. It works the same way polarized lenses work on sunglasses. In this footage, you can see how the polarized lens reduces the surface glare, allowing the camera to pick up the sea life just below the surface. This is a cow nose ray, which was swimming on the fringe of a huge bunker pod. You can see how massive the pod is as I pull away. A little later on, that same cow nose ray hooked up with a couple of dolphins. As always, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section below if you've tried using ND filters, and if so, what's your opinion? Have they improved your footage, and are they worth using? And while you're down there, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.